You're listening to Trax FM's podcast. If you've enjoyed our content, more podcasts are available on the RTM Click app and website. Let us know what you think. Please email us at traxfm.rtm at gmail.com. Like and follow us on social media at Trax FM Official. <laughs> In an era marked by rapid progression of technological innovation and fast sense of absoluteness of one shiny new platform after another, radio begins its second century of service as one of the most dependable and widely utilized form of media in the world. As the technology, science, means of communications and system of programming audio elements, radio has its roots all the way back to the 1800s. In the mid-1890s, Marconi developed the first apparatus for long-distance radio communications based on the techniques physicists were using to study electromagnetic waves. Marconi filed a patent in the United States in the year 1900s for this technology and nine years later was awarded with the Nobel Prize in Physics, which he shared with Carl Ferdinand Braun for their contribution to the development of wireless telegraphy, or as we call it today, radio communications. Since then, Radio has changed the lives of millions of people by bringing the world to their ears. From jumping to joy after listening to the famous words of Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra Al Hajj, declaring independence on 31st August 1957, the are sure to win. The or maybe the fleeing of their homes upon hearing the threat the of communists in the 1970s, the and the people of the free Indian Chinese or maybe. To celebrate this, the member states of UNESCO in 2011 proclaimed 13th February as World Radio Day. A year later, in 2012, this was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly as one of its UN International Day. For those of you who don't know, 13th February is also the anniversary of the creation of United Nations Radio in 1946. Now, you might be wondering, why is there a need for us to have a World Radio Day? This is the United Nations. According to the United Nations, the World Radio Day is an opportunity to celebrate radio as a medium as it serves a chance to promote international cooperation between radio broadcasters, as to encourage major networks and local radio stations to foster access to information and freedom of expression. Raising awareness among the general public and media about the value of public service audio to encourage decision makers to promote free, independent, pluralistic radio and to strengthen networking and international cooperations between broadcasters are part of World Radio Day's objectives. And to achieve this, a strong theme is needed. Radio, a century informing, entertaining and educating. That is the theme selected for 2024 World Radio Day, which shines on radio's remarkable past, relevant present, and promise of a dynamic future. To celebrate 2024 World Radio Day, we bring you this documentary as a reflection towards this international celebration. In this documentary, we will talk about Tracks FM its contribution to the radio industry, as well as its evolution towards the future. To delve further, we spoke to former radio presenter in the 1970s, Dato Harjit Singh Hollen, on his experience working with Trax FM, which back then was known as Blue Network. Blue Network was the only network available then for music. And... Uh, I used to get a lot of feedback. Those days, of course, we did not have uh, such technology. Uh, the only feedback that we used to get was over the telephone or 
by way of uh, postcards or letters, whereby I even used to uh, spin songs upon request by certain uh, listeners who wish to, uh, well, send birthday greetings, etc. Our top story, Malaysia needs comprehensive transformation to become a high-income nation. I'm Harjit Singh Hala. Well known for its flawless diction of both Bahasa Melayu and English, and being the famously known sick newscaster on RTM TV1, Dato Harjit Singh Hala got his start in broadcasting with Blue Network in the early 1970s. My stint with the Trex FM started in the uh, early 70s. Uh, it was then known as the, the Blue Network. Now it is known as Trex FM. Connecting with the audience is one of Dato Harj's specialities. And it is not something new in broadcasting as it was used in the early days of radio broadcasting. Or so we were told by Dato Harj as to what the practice was in the 1970s. I also had my weekly program, which used to be called uh, Listener of the Week. That is in Malay, we used to call it the Pendengar Kita, whereby I used to invite uh, a listener to the studios uh, every Monday night, uh, 10.30, I believe. Uh, and uh, while talking to the listener, chatting with the listener over the waves, uh, the listener would also be allowed to play choose and play his or her kind of music. Uh, and of course, we used to have uh, the request programs and uh, getting letters from listeners to play their kind of songs, their requests. We also spoke with Newbert Ambrose, former announcer of the Blue Network, who spent almost 20 years in the radio industry. I worked for almost 20 years from the early 1980s to 2001, since it was called Blue Network. Then changed to Radio 4, eventually Trax FM in line with digitalization and the times. I used to do specific programs like the Golden Oldies, Country, and even the latest top hits at the time. I also read the news occasionally and hosted interview programs concerning health and youth issues. We also spoke to former radio producer, Norlida Muhammad No, who spent 39 years at RTM, covering many assignments and gained many experiences in radio broadcasting. For me, the memories that really made me happy during my time in radio broadcasting it was when I got to interview so many well-known personalities in the music industry and also in our political arena. Tracks FM, the official English language radio station operated by Radio Television Malaysia RTM, was rebranded on 1st April 2005. It was previously known as the English Language Service in 1946, the Blue Network in 1959, and Radio 4 in 1993. Radio 4 with you. The station's name, Trax FM, was used since 1st April 2005 as part of its rebranding. The name derived from the word track and XX, the later denoting the old tagline, experience the excitement. The station switched from its initial tagline, travel and music, to experience the excitement after the rebranding in 2005. Despite the name change, the vision of Trax FM remains the same. It serves as one of the official government media platforms that provide information and entertainment for its audiences, as well as connecting various public and private agencies with the people of Malaysia. But it was all not without challenges. There are some disadvantages of radio broadcast. Compared to social media, radio has limited interactivity. It's primarily a one-way communication channel and audience engagement is more challenging. Radio lacks the visual components that social media platforms can offer. Unlike social media content, radio content is not easily shareable. That was Dr. Mala Santi Santera Segapan, a medical officer and health influencer famously known for her Chalote Dr. Mala channel on Facebook and TikTok. According to her, each media platform has their own pros and cons. 
Radio, such as Trax FM, has inspired and informed listeners regardless of their age, gender, and even nationalities, bringing all of them together. This comes as modern internet-based streaming platforms continue emerging along with the enhancement of social media giants, prompting the question whether radio broadcast remains relevant in this day and age. However, Norita has been in radio for 39 years, has her own opinion. According to her, not only radio broadcast remains relevant today, it has also evolved concurrently with the digitalization of media platforms, not just in disseminating information and providing live entertainment, but also in advertising. Do a lot of people listen to radio? Well, if you ask me, I feel that radio is still very much relevant in uh, today's world. But now, uh, with the digital platforms and all that, radio has evolved so much. In fact, listening to music and news is still a big part in uh, our daily Malaysian life. While these opinions come from people with years of experience working in the industry, we also spoke with members of the public getting their opinion on radio, whether they can remain a main media platform or their time has simply passed. We met with Nur Akila Aprijanto, a music lover working as a lawyer in Kuantan. To be honest, recently, I have not been listening to radio, but I must say that before I started listening to uh, those third-party apps, I do find comfort in radios, in listening to talk shows on radios. According to Akila, the main attraction of listening to radio is its radio presenters or DJs discussing topics of the day and having music being played in between those conversations. Calling this as the human touch, Akila said she appreciates that radio stations still include as many listeners as possible by calling them up and getting their opinions on these discussions. The same views were echoed by senior research fellow of Taylor's University's School of Media Communications, Associate Professor Dr. Chang Peng Ki. Attributing this to the gratification theory, he said it is normal for average people to listen to radio as a means of escapism or to release some stress, especially after spending the whole day at work. Hearing a piece of music or familiar sound helps produce dopamine, or what is commonly known as a happy hormone. But Dr. Chang also agrees that radio announcers produce that certain unique impact, something that radio listeners could not get by streaming to their personal online playlist. I think that is quite common. I think uh, 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 in any radio station that I have uh, seen, uh, that I, 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 I observe, and uh, definitely DJ play an important role. This is where the, the DJ will also kind of uh, sense that uh, they are also very sensitive in understanding their audience needs. And then that's what, besides uh, giving the information and also the education, and sometimes that is what that they play a role also like a companion, as I said. Uh, not just only the device, but actually the life inside the radio is actually the announcer. We also spoke to Amalina Ahmad Rezwan, an admin officer from Kuala Selango, and Dr. Shazwan Sharif, medical officer in Kuala Lumpur. While podcasts offer an in-depth and detailed serious discussion on a particular topic, and online streaming platforms allow its subscribers to create and listen to their own music playlist, both Amalina and Dr. Shazwan said sometimes it is better to enjoy the randomness of music and topics curated by radio stations. In my opinion, radio stations such as Trax FM is still relevant in this age as it is one of the undergoing portainment options apart from other existing digital platform. Sometimes I listen to radio station for the DJ themselves and also the topic they bring to the table. Sometimes it's so random that for me personally, I like random topics whereas content streaming created for one particular topic only. Meanwhile, long-time Tracks FM listener Ronnie Seat said he prefers to get the latest information and updates from radio compared to other media platforms. 
by listening to the radio, we got a lot of info and then uh, updates of what's happening, you know. And then we there's a lot of uh, music, entertainment, and we get to know uh, more new songs. <laughs> For the record, Trax FM is the only radio station that spins music from the 1970s right up to the present hit music. This flavorful manner creates a connection with its listeners that brings about engagement as they're taken down memory lane. According to Dato Harjit, this practice helps Trax FM have their own niche and stay relevant while getting the attention of its younger audience. By and large, it has got... Uh, its own set of listeners and uh, they are very loyal to Trax FM, just like someone may be loyal to any other radio station. So despite any other content, Trax FM will remain relevant because of its loyal listeners. According to Norlida, radio is a medium for people who reach out to them and they do it every day and night creating constant engagement between the two. You think about uh, what you get over the radio. Uh, you know, there are also uh, segments that listeners can listen to. And uh, the, uh, in fact, radio stations, radio stations have their target audiences. Uh, so everyone gets a piece of the pie, so to say. And targeting the potential of uh, radio from access uh, to the local community to the ability to address uh, specific sub-markets uh, such as using individual stations. Well, I can say that a radio message that is well-crafted and well-put uh, is, uh, of course, uh, able to reach all the right listeners. Having a strong following is the dream of any radio station, but getting an audience is not as hard as maintaining them. We ask members of the public what could still be done in order for a radio station such as Trax FM to stay relevant. Maybe Trax FM can learn more on topics for youth's prefer such as e-sports and memes. Gone were the days that the people listen to the radio for artists, and for news and gossip. Now we have TikTok for that. Those contents are more easier and approachable for the youth. I think Trax FM can take a chance to diversify the variety of programs included in the selections of topics and collaborate with other guests or young influencers. They can attract youth interest, especially in discussing current informative issues. Other than youth-related topics being mentioned numerously, there were also calls asking for Trax FM to update their playlist and to shine the lights on local indie bands. I am happy with what the current segments of producers and DJs are doing, but I would, uh, I would, I would like to listen to more current new songs or, or perhaps indie, indie local songs, like you know the local indie bands that we have. I, I would assume um, for tracks, the biggest or highest rating for listeners would be on the evening commute. I mean, I assume I don't know if that's true, but. I think that would be a good platform to also share about our current talent or our local talent. And I think not as often because nobody knows much to a specific uh, artist, but share more about our local songs as well. With all that being said, Trax FM does not move forward without any innovation of its own. Asked about what can be done in terms of innovating and keeping up with the trends, Dato Hartit suggests for radio producers to make a difference in order to keep their listeners, especially the youth, to remain loyal to them. Well, it's basically what uh, Rex FM can offer to the youth to keep them uh, loyal to their channel. You must uh, present something which is different from other stations, podcasts, etc. So it basically boils down to what can you offer to the youth to maintain their loyalty towards Trax FM. And yes, you can make a difference if you want to attract and maintain your set of listeners. You must make a difference. In line with Trax FM's digitalization efforts, the radio station embraces the use of streaming technology by having its own podcast programs. Besides that, Trax FM is evolving by expanding its social media presence as the station incorporates technology like vMix, where listeners could tune in and see the announcers and their guests in the studio. 
according to Tracks FM announcer Anil Alagu. The station has been constantly evolving over time, as it has picked up with the rapid pace of changes, especially when competing with social media. We established our presence on, you know, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. Every other uh, social media avenue that's out there, Trax FM has established its presence, and we're also going big on podcasts because we want to make it available. We want to make our content accessible to our listeners with radio on demand. So in case they missed out on any of our interviews, they can always catch the replay by uh, logging on to our Facebook uh, page or also our YouTube channel as well. Another announcer, Els Dines, said Tracks FM has got into all social media platforms, embracing the digitalization practice currently adopted by RTM. I think Tracks FM's programs have catered to a lot of people and like not just a specific demographic. You know, we, we come a lot we, we come up with a lot of contents related to health, women, youth, and many more. Because we want these programs to help as many people out there as possible, as many Malaysians as possible. So that's why uh, I think the programs are really helpful and useful. The Sunday Breakfast Show, W Talk, and Spooky Tales are just a few of many podcast programs that are available on RTM Click's mobile application and web portal for all listeners. Its current tagline, Experience the Excitement, is well crafted. Content offered by radio broadcasters is a major part of its operations and without quality content, listeners might not be interested to keep on tuning to the broadcast. In producing these quality contents, verification processes are vital, especially for mainstream public radio stations such as Trax FM. Meanwhile, Trax FM, being the official government radio station, has always prioritized accuracy about anything. Producers, researchers, and announcers work together in tandem to maintain the integrity of Trax FM, not just in delivering news, but also creating impactful contents. According to Dr. Chang, these processes make the news to be more authentic, trustworthy, and prevent the spread of fake news. Actually, it's not a fake news, it's false information. Okay, the false information is actually including this either is a misinformation or disinformation. And the worst is actually sometimes that they may have this malinformation. And uh, definitely whatever that is actually being added on uh, uh, by radio is uh, kind of uh, 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 responsible. Meanwhile, in terms of speed, radio broadcasters are thought to have been left behind by a great margin by what Elon Musk dubbed as citizen journalists as he claimed that these journalists would be able to spread messages faster than any traditional media. However, the truth of the matter is, faster does not mean factual. This is what uh, we are always looking for uh, for radio to verify the information that is actually being broadcast. And uh, definitely uh, for uh, social media, it's, I think that... Uh, uh, we cannot just simply take whatever they, they say, and especially for those influencers with the purpose of sometimes that we know they are actually talking about only the 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 lie and 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 only the what we call uh, towards the end for the purpose of their commercial value. Uh, okay, so and uh, definitely uh, I trust more on radio. As compared to social media platforms that provide unfiltered contents. Radio broadcasters such as Trax FM delivers trusted and verified information, thus maintaining its credibility as one of the main public radio broadcasters. And this was also acknowledged by Dr. Mala. Besides that, mainstream media often carries a higher level of credibility and trust in among the people. Hence, despite social media popularity, radio and other mainstream media avenue remains important. Radio also can provide immediate information and news updates, making it a quick and efficient medium for disseminating, inf for disseminating important information, especially during emergencies. Not to discredit social media platforms, but credibility is what makes a broadcaster legit. And it comes with hard work of its journalists, editors, producers and managers that were built throughout the years. And this credibility is what encourages health advocators such as Dr. Mala 
to work with mainstream radio channels, such as Trax FM, hoping to reach a wider range of audience. As an influencer, I have used mainstream media as a platform to spread awareness, especially on a certain campaign, and mainly because, usually because I was asked to. Therefore, spreading awareness via mainstream media, be it radio or television, it means I'm sharing it with a larger group of people, and the impact for me is bigger. In my case, it's just just simply a healthier nation. The trust that the people have can be attributed to the professional journalism practice in filtering the feeds of information acquired from various sources. According to Dr. Chang, this is called effective information management. We, we are actually talking about the selective exposure and also the selective uh, uh, selection, and then also eventually that uh, for the selective retention. So I think that is quite normal in the normal communication that whatever that you receive the information is also go depend on your preference, okay? And that is how that uh, they 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 will uh, what we call uh, make the filtering. Social media platforms are an excellent tool if used correctly, not just by social influencers but also major media houses. And in the case of Trax FM, it was used to connect with its audience. Having that strong connection with the audience creates an everlasting impact, not just for radio stations, but most for members of the public. Recalling her experience working with a radio station to create a public service announcement specifically aimed at elderly in the Indian community in the rural areas, Dr. Mala said she personally received many positive feedback thanking her and the radio station for the message. In social media, we count things like the likes, the shares, the downloads and all that. I mean, the very material thinging. But sharing via mainstream media gives the real impact to the people and the satisfaction for health activists like me is huge. This acknowledgement coming from an influential social media health activist like Chaloteh Dr. Mala testifies the role and importance of a mainstream media like radio. So it has been established that broadcasters must connect with its audience, a proof of Trax FM's longevity despite the many rebranding exercises carried out throughout the years. Recalling their experience with their beloved radio station, the former staff of Trax FM said working in a radio station has been one of the best memories they have in their career and whole life. One of the best memories is the friendship we developed with listeners and fellow DJs. Some of these friendships have lasted even till today. The best memory working in uh, Trex FM, of course, then Blue Network during the 70s and early 80s. Radio is here to stay. Keep the flag flying. I would like to wish all those involved in Trax FM, from the head of service, the DJs, news presenters, editors, producers, technical staff, to keep the airwaves alive with music, news and information. Happy World Radio Day 2024. Trax FM is doing everything it can to provide the best possible radio content that can touch the lives of people. We just don't want to come on air and play songs and speak about things that our radio announcers like to speak. We want to speak about things that matter to everyone, things that get everyone moving up in the morning when they wake up and listen to radio. World Radio Day, of course, is a big thing for all radio stations out there, including for us here at Trax FM. And of course, uh, wishing all radio announcers and radio stations out there, you know, including us, everyone here, happy World Radio Day. On this World Radio Day, we can conclude that radio still has a place in this digital era and holds a significant reach to diversified audiences in spreading important information and awareness. Not forgetting that radio also carries a higher level of credibility and trust among people as it can reach specific geographical areas and communities. It is a remarkable achievement for a major mass communications media to continue its relevance past 100 years and still be a force for freedom of expression, joy and knowledge. As we proudly tell its story, let's welcome radio's future in the next century. Join us in celebrating 2024 World Radio Day. Until next time, we thank you and stay tuned to Trax FM.
You're listening to Tracks FM's podcast. If you've enjoyed our content, more podcasts are available on the RTM Click app and website. Let us know what you think. Please email us at tracksfm.rtm at gmail.com. Like and follow us on social media at Tracks FM Official. Thank you.